In today's video, I'm going to be showing you some of my favorite tricks and tools that allow me to use a Webflow more efficiently. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hey friends, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of my favorite tips and tricks that I've developed over the last few years for building Webflow sites. Now, just for a little bit of context, I am someone who wears multiple caps in my business, meaning that besides doing all of the Webflow stuff, I also take care of all of the automation, sales, marketing, which means that whenever I am working on a certain aspect of my business, I want to make sure that I'm using my time in the most efficient way. So a lot of the tips I'm going to be sharing in this video today are really focused on getting it to the point where your site is good enough as fast as possible. Now, with all of that being said, let's dive into the first thing, which is that I always start a new project with a style guide. Okay, so a style guide is a page inside of a Webflow project that you can use to design or predefine certain elements inside of your Webflow project. Now, there are a lot of style guides out there that you can use. I, for example, use the Reloom library style guide, but there are a whole bunch of other ones out there. And this is usually the first place where I'll start my project off. And what you can do in here is you can define things like your fonts, your font weights, you can style your buttons and this is a great starting point because whenever you start to define all of your styles as soon as you start building out your actual section and your pages all of the settings that you have inside of your style guide will automatically be applied to your project so typically I take about five to 20 minutes to style the different elements on my page. And here's an example of a completed one. I just changed some of the fonts. I designed some of the buttons and I added some uh, colors that I can use for backgrounds and those types of things. And now when I go ahead and I start designing all of the different pages and sections, it automatically pulls all of those style settings into my project, meaning that I don't actually have to go through each element and style this individual button and that button. And and it just makes the overall process of building my site a lot easier. Now, obviously an argument can be made that taking this approach means that you don't necessarily have very interesting looking sections and pages. However, the approach that I take with it is to get the basics right, making sure that all of the different elements across different pages and sections look consistent. And if I do want to refine it, I can always spend more time on individual sections. Or what I typically do is just hand it over to someone who actually enjoys those finer details when it comes to web design. Design. Now, another shortcut that I have found that has been really, really useful when it's come to building Webflow sites is using component libraries. Now, component libraries have been all the rage, and over the last few months, there have been a lot of people who have started creating components for Webflow sites. In fact, Webflow has actually launched their own component library that you can use, and a lot of the uh, components that you can use by companies like Flowbase or Reloom are free to use, which is incredibly useful. Now, the main difference between a component library and a template is that your project actually starts from scratch and you, instead of editing the existing pages and sections that you have in your template, you actually just copy and paste in the elements that you want to use. So in this case, if you want to add a nav bar, you don't actually start off with the entire page. You can just add your element straight in there. And this is a huge time saver because not just do your sections get built out and they look super slick like this one here. It is also incredibly useful because all of your components will automatically be mobile responsive, which in my opinion is one of the biggest time sucks when you are building your, out your site from scratch. Now, there are a lot of great component libraries worth checking out out there. The one that I use is the Reloom library for the very, very simple reason that they are quite plain, meaning that they don't predefine any styles and it makes it a lot easier for me to then just simply adapt it to whatever it is that I want to do rather than having to adjust already existing styles. And also they've got some pretty cool add-ons with the Chrome extension that make it super easy to copy and paste different elements. And so if, for example, I wanted to create a contact page template, I can just go in here, search it in the Chrome extension, uh, copy whatever I think is good, and then I can just uh, paste it in here and then it will automatically apply the styles from my style guide to the component that I copy and pasted in and again like I said it's mobile responsive it uses client first that I'll be talking about in a second and it just makes the overall process of getting different pages and sections up and running a lot easier. 
Okay, tip number three is to use a class naming framework. Now, if you are brand new to building sites in Webflow, then a class naming frameworks might not mean a lot to you. But just in case, basically what it means is whenever you style a element or a component in Webflow, you have to assign properties to it. For example, if you want to make your properties a bold, then what you would typically do is go ahead into your CSS panel you'll change the font to bold but what you want to do is you want to make sure that you can now give this setting a name that is clear to understand for you but maybe also for people that you might want to work with and so what you would typically do is go in here and you would set a class name so in this case I would change this to bold and now I know that whenever I use the class name bold that it will apply that style to whatever element I apply it to now obviously if you're just getting started what most people do including myself is just develop your own class naming framework if at all sometimes you don't even really need to do it you might end up in a situation where you have a whole bunch of elements called div block but if you want to uh, make sure that your projects are manageable over time as your project grows then I do recommend using a class naming framework luckily there are already quite a few predefined one out there that are very useful one worth checking out is called Mast, um, which is by no code supply company and basically what they do is they already have a bunch of class names defined so for example if you want to always center your elements you'll see that there's already a class name as you text center defined and what that will do is it will always text align center these elements another one that is out there that is used very much including by myself is client first and it works in a very similar way you have a whole bunch of class names that are already predefined on your style guide and you can then simply apply those class names to those elements now if you're just getting started, master is quite a good one because it's a bit less complex than the client first one. But if you want to, um, you know, have more predefined options, then I definitely recommend checking out client first as well. Um, one of last thing that I want to say about class naming conventions is that I exclusively use component libraries that are using a predefined class naming convention because that actually allows me to then later on outsource certain elements of my Webflow build to people who are experienced with those class naming conventions because I then don't really need to explain how I structure my page and my CSS and all that type of stuff. They'll be able to just jump in, see it, understand what's going on, and then they'll be able to to continue to build using that same class naming framework so even though this is a little bit more complex it is definitely worth your time and energy to learn a class naming convention okay so on to tip number four and this again is something that relates specifically to reloom and components now this is a feature that they launched in the chrome extension that has turned out to be super helpful and that is to reuse existing components that you build in other projects now as some of you might know i run the unicorn factory which is a freelance marketplace in canada and in new zealand now when i started working on the unicorn factory canada i wanted to make sure that the style and the design of all of the different elements is very similar to what I have in New Zealand and so one thing that I do is I just copy and paste different elements between the projects but there is actually a way to do this a lot more efficiently and that is to just save your components in your own Reloom library and so if we head over to the Chrome extension for Reloom you can see that I have my own component libraries these ones here are for my course this one here is one that you can download but this unicorn factory one is specific components for the unicorn factory that I can copy and paste between the unicorn factory New Zealand and Canada and one the way that it works is real simple you can just go ahead you can create your own component if you want you can simply jump into your webflow project you can go and select whatever component it is that you want to reuse so let's say we want to uh, use this section you simply copy it then you head on over to a reloom where is it there we go and you paste it and then what you can do is you can name it so we'll call this the category section you can add your own screenshot and so on i'll save you the time but when you then come back into your project and it doesn't even necessarily need to be back into this project it can be any other project you'll be able to reuse 
that component that you saved inside of your folder. And this has turned out to be a super time saver when it comes to building out different section between multiple projects that are the same. Now, obviously not everyone's gonna create multiple marketplaces in different cities, but if you run a design agency and you uh, build certain sections out that are popular, then this is definitely something worth doing, especially if you can uh, pair it with your style guides you can very quickly spin up sections that work very well and so highly recommend looking into using and saving your own components okay tip number five is to avoid using lorem ipsum now i cannot tell you how many times i have run into a situation where i've used lorem ipsum and it's then turned out to not look how i wanted it to look because the lorem ipsum wouldn't align with what the actual content and data was that that I had designed for. So one of the recommendations that I have is that you should use placeholder text as fast as possible. And there are a lot of different tools that you can use. If for example, you use Figma, then Reloom has a tool called Reloom Ipsum that automatically generates copy for your landing page. I personally, because I don't use Figma that much or at all for that matter, just use ChatGDP. And so what you can do is you can just jump in here. You can ask it to write copy for your business idea. And again, it's not set in stone. It's just for the moment. You can just paste it in here. You can make whatever adjustments you need and you can then just keep prompting, um, you know, chat GDP to make certain refinements. And what I found is that taking this process actually speeds up uh, your site getting to the point where it actually feels real because your actual content and copy is real. So what I always recommend doing as you're building out the first version of your site is to replace whatever placeholder text you can find anywhere in the link section, in the buttons with text that you might actually find on the site. Even if you are not a copywriter, using tools like ChatGDP or Reloom Ipsum will make your site look a lot more legit. You'll be able to design certain elements of your page with actual copy in mind. And overall, I just feel like it helps you build a bit more momentum with your build because it feels a bit more real because there's actual content on your site. So tip number five is never lower Ipsum and try and put real placeholder text in there using tools like chat gdp okay now before we get into the last point quick favor to ask you number one if you haven't already subscribe to the channel if you thought this video was valuable up until this point hit the like button and also if you want me to make a video on how to be more efficient with automation tools like make.com, then let me know in the comments down below. I've uh, optimized some of my workflows for building automations and more importantly, managing automation. So if you want to see what I did, let me know in the comments down below. With all that being said, let's dive into the last point, which is take care of your on-page SEO as you're building out your site. Okay, so what are the essentials that we're going to have to cover when we are working on our on-page SEO? So the first thing that I always do is to make sure that I set all of my title tags and my uh, page descriptions, meta descriptions as they're called, my open graph titles, open graph descriptions. You can do that by setting it in the actual page settings um, for both collection pages but also static pages. Now as soon as that is done, the next thing that I like to do is I like to just check out the audit panel um, and the audit panel can be opened just by opening the um, publish button and then hitting over here and it will typically tell you if there are any issues. Issues. issues that commonly come up is that you don't have alt tags on images that you're using. Now, a quick little tip, if you are um, using the CMS, you can actually bind fields from your CMS collection to your images. So in this case, you can see that I am binding my name field to this particular image here. Then the next thing is making sure that you don't skip heading levels. Now, I'm not gonna turn this into an SEO class, but basically when you're structuring your page, you wanna structure it in a way that it is easier for Google to understand what it is. And so typically what you wanna do is make sure that your heading levels follow an order. So in this case, we have an H1, then we've got a bunch of H2s, and then within that H2, you might also have an H3. And so you want to follow that structure so that Google then comes to your page and kind of can see how your page is structured. The more, uh, the better you structure your page, the better your SEO results will be. Now there's one more tool that I've been using recently that has been pretty cool, um, which is called SimFlow, which is by Pate Digital. Um, that is owned by Peyton, who also has an awesome YouTube channel on here. Um, and 
what this tool does is it basically helps you optimize your pages for certain keywords. So let's say, for example, I want to optimize the page I'm on now, which is um, this is marketing for this is marketing book review. So what I'll do is I'll look up my page, then I'll go and set my keyword. Now, you'll want to do some keyword research first in order to figure out what exactly it is that you want to optimize it for. But I'd say in this case, I want to optimize it for this is marketing book review. And so once you save your page keyword, what will happen is SimFlow will calculate a score in terms of how well your page is doing. And you'll see exactly what's good, what's not good. So when you go through here, you can see, yes, the page title is set page title contains our keyword and you'll see that there are also a whole bunch of tips that you can follow as well and so when I come in here I can see that there are a few issues that I'm having for example my h1 does not contain my keyword then my meta description does not contain my keyword and so all of these things here count and if you follow these things as you're building your site the benefits of it all will add up. So SimFlow, it's been a real cool tool. It makes the whole process of optimizing your um, pages for certain keywords a lot better. It also has um, a page speed insight um, add-on. So if you want to um, see what your page speed score is and you don't want to have to go into the browser, you can do it inside of here. But overall, super useful tool. Okay, so let's recap some of the key tips. Number one, start with a style guide. Number two, use component libraries to speed up the actual build of your pages and sections. Number three, use class naming frameworks and class naming conventions like Mast or Client First or Knockout or whatever else is out there. Number four is uh, reuse some of your own components. So if you are using Reloom, you can save components that you have created from scratch and you can reuse it in other places. Number five is avoid Lorem Ipsum at all costs because you end up designing pages around elements that are not actually going to be written out the way that you thought it was going to be. And then finally, take care of your on-page optimization as you build. Now, if I have missed out on any valuable tips and tricks that you think I should know, let me know in the comments down below and I might include it in a future video. With all of that being said, thank you so much for sticking around for the entire video and I'll see you back here for the next one.